Today we're going to be looking at the Frigidaire Custom Imperial, product of General Motors Division, um, a fine stove made in uh, 1964 by the Frigidaire Company. Um, this was the 40 inch version of this stove. It's got uh, the, the double ovens and um, this one here we're going to discuss the, the, the functions of it and then the, the cleaning and service. We're going to just make all that kind of quick, quick topics here. Um, the, the use of this stove, uh, we'll start at the top and work our way down. Um, over here on the left hand side you have your timers. Um, what this timer allowed you to do was to uh, set the time that you wanted to start cooking, what time, how many hours you wanted it to cook, and then what time you would want it to stop cooking. Um, it gives you the option to put your roast in before you go to work, and then when you come home you have a meal that's uh, cooked and ready to go. Uh, you have this option here, which was the meat thermometer option. Um, when you had your stove, you would plug your meat thermometer in here to the side. You would plug the, uh, the temperature probe into your meat. You put that into the oven. You set your probe to uh, uh, poultry, which you want it to be cooked at, they suggested uh, 195 degrees internal temperature. And then your alarm would go off when the, when the meat reaches that temperature. Over down a little bit further on the panel, um, uh, there's a little delamination on that logo there, but uh, that's not a problem. Um, uh, the, you have your oven control, left oven, right oven. You have your break, bake and broil lights that will tell you which you have it set to. If you set it set to broil or bake or however, however you have your, your oven temperature selected. Uh, you have lamps that you can individually control. You can turn on one oven, the other oven, or you can turn on the panel, which was this lamp that illuminates the entire cook surface. So each oven is independently lamped, and then there's a big lamp that runs uh, over top of the cook surface. You have your broiler uh, grill, which allows you to cook uh, off the broiler surface, so it allows you to, to set how hot you want your broiler to be. Over here you have your rear burner controls and your front burner controls. Um, and those uh, front burners actually had two options. One was the speed heat option and one was the heat miter option. Uh, the speed heat allowed you to heat uh, boil water really, really fast. Um, that dumps a lot of electricity onto the burner. Now we know um, with microwaves and things like that, if you need to heat water, use your microwave. Try to avoid using the speed heat option. It puts a lot of electricity to that coil. It's going to save your wires. Use it as a standard burner, not as the speed heat option because uh, if it can burn out your burner, it can burn out your wire. It's a lot of stress on that for the electronic, electric components. So uh, just use it as a standard burner if it works and you'll probably find that that burner will last you a lot longer. The heat minder was a thermostatic controlled burner. Uh, you'll see that in a second, but that allows you to, uh, if you're doing candy or if you're doing frying, it allows you to set your, your uh, whatever you're cooking at a very specific temperature. If you need oil or whatever you're doing, melting chocolate or something, you want a very specific temperature, that allows you to do that. The other two rear burners act as normal. Here is your light as we work our way down to the stove. Down the stove, this light would illuminate your cook surface. Um, below the light here, you have your double oven options. The great thing about this is if you have uh, a bad back or if you have kids or what have you, you can open this stove up. It lifts right up. It allows you to access the ovens. The oven doors lift right up. It allows you to access the ovens. Um, allows you to pull things out, uh, get them at, at, a, at a waist level. You know, you have your roast in here. You pull this thing out. You work on pies. You're not bending over. Or you don't have to worry about opening up and have this big blast of heat come out and hit you in the face. Or, or you know, have a, a kitchen that's too small. You drop your drawer and you got kids or dogs running around. Um, it, it can be a hassle. This, this eliminates all that. It puts all of your cooking right at eye level. If you want to check your pie, you just look in there, turn your light on, you can see your pie. You're not having to bend over so far. As we go down the stove, you have your, uh, this is your cooktop. You hit your release lever, this slides out. This is the first locked position that allows you to run these two burners. You cannot turn on the burners if the drawer is not pulled out. You cannot turn on the back burners if you're pulled to the halfway position. You pull to the full extent position, now you'll be able to turn on all your burners. There are switches on this slide. If you're having problems with your burners coming on, it could be those switches that are on that slide track. Um, uh, so that's one thing you can look at if you have any, any problems. But here's your thermostatic burner control. This is your speed heat burner, and these are the two normal operating burners that you have there. This release, slide it back in, and we'll move down the stove. This is an optional cabinet that you could have purchased for the stove. It allows you to either have storage and or cooling racks. If you're doing a lot of baking or a lot of cooking, you have a big meal, you need to pull something out of the oven, you pull it out of the oven, you have your, the same way that the oven racks work, these racks, these slides out, you put your, your, your pie on there if you want to let it cool for a little bit, you don't want you know, cat hair getting on it or the dogs pulling it off the top of the oven, and then you can slide this inside there. You have extra storage down below for, for pots and pans, and these two really nice slide-out cooling racks that you could use for storage or cooling racks. So that's your optional base cabinet. The nice thing about this cabinet is when you slide it in, it has some removable panels in the back 
So it allows you to access the cord to your stove. You can plug that in, screw these panels right back on that hole, and now you're able to, to, to get to that back without having to slide it out if you have to unplug your stove for some reason. You don't have to pull the whole unit out from the wall. Okay, so there's a few features of the oven. There's a lot of accessories that you can purchase. You could have purchased a hood on the top. You could have purchased a, a rotisserie that plugs into this. Um, all kinds of cool things that they had for the stove. So now that we've gone over a few features, I want to go over some cleanability real quick on this thing. If you have the stove and you want to clean the glass doors, you push these two little buttons here and the glass door drops back, allowing you to clean the glass this way. Both stove doors allow you to do that. You flip that back up, push those latches again, and your stove door locks back in so that way you can clean the glass doors. If you'd like to clean the inside, all you have to do is remove your racks. The racks have nice pins on them that stop them from coming out, but they're easily removed. You have a surface down here that you want to clean. Your burner for your oven lifts right up and it stays like that so you can wipe off the bottom of the stove and then you just put your burner back down. These side racks of the oven, they come out very easily. They're marked right and left. You can put them right back in. It allows you to clean your stove. It allows you to wipe down the entire surface of the stove without having to do much work. You can also take these racks and put them in your dishwasher. You can put those side racks in your dishwasher, plus screens. Clean everything up, scrub it up real well. There's a couple of pins in there. Do not allow those things to come out until you're lifted actually up. Real easy to move around and change the position of the racks and clean. And both stoves had those features as far as being able to clean, clean that thing out. The cleaning features in here on the burner, on the cooktop. If you take your burner, you flip it up, they will all lock into that position just like that. They all flip up and lock in one position. The, the support and then the burner tray comes out. The far left burner is the one that's the most important if you're trying to figure out the model number and serial number because underneath of this burner in the back is the model number and serial number of your stove. It's on a little plate back there. And uh, if you need to find that information, that's where it is located. If you need to service the burners, there's a panel that, if you need to service the burners or the latch that pulls this drawer out, there's a panel underneath of the stove here. There's a couple of screws. Those come off. The whole uh, drip pan down here comes out in one piece and it has your model number serial number on it and it allows you to access the burners that way. Another quick service uh, tip is you have two screws on top of this aluminum trim. That piece pops off, slides out, and you're able to access all of the controls behind this glass from up top of here, just like popping the hood on your car. On the back, there's a couple of options for you to access that are service panels. There's two, two big black panels that are your main service panels that come off, they unbolt. If you need to put a new pigtail on, if you want to take this pigtail off when you're moving it, whatever you want to do, you have access to all your uh, electrical components um, through the top panel and then these back panels on the stove. <coughs> so there is some servicing advice, there is some cleaning advice, there's some usage advice. Um, another thing that people are unaware of is this is not a stainless steel top. None of this is stainless steel. It looks like stainless steel, it's cool like stainless steel, but it's actually brushed nickel. So keep that in mind when you're taking care of these stoves. This one here is a 64. They did change the glass on a lot of these every year, uh, I believe. They, they denoted model years by the style of pinstriping that's on the glass. So some of them are square, some of them have circles, some of them have uh, uh, um, uh, uh, different shapes that run across this. This is a combination of kind of this eye oval and the little diamond, so that was the 64 model. Um, custom Imperial was the top of the line. They had the Custom Deluxe as well, which just didn't have as few options. And then they have the model, which is a 30 inch model that does not have the double oven stove. Um, if you get an opportunity to get one of these, um, I'd jump on it. This one has serviced a family for about 50 years. It's the Frigidaire Custom Imperial. And uh, according to Frigidaire, it was the best thing to ever happen to cooking or you. So maybe pick yourself one up and uh, have a little fun with some ovens of the future from the past, tomorrow, today. <laughs>